All right, so started construction on the wave wedge. It is coming along. Got notches in the plywood. And some more to go, but start. plywood goes on top that sheet gotta make sure to get all the little gaps for make sure that when uh, that gets out on top of the water that it's not flooding it before I'm ready so we don't want it to sink before we're in the right spot all right you know get some blocking in there so that's just to keep the water out of the from the coming in the seam. And then this piece is just to reinforce the plywood where the rope actually ties to the corner of the structure. So it'll come through a loop outside and then come through these two holes and then maybe tie off and come through that front hole there. Here we are inside the wood shop. Building away, waiting for summer, waves and water, because this is what it does in the wintertime here. You need to keep the door open. The weather is just a menace. So the idea here is that this would actually be sitting in the on the river bottom, and then the water comes up over the front face, pins it to the ground, and then goes up and over and forms a recirculating bait wave back here. So I'm not exactly sure whether it's gonna form a wave over there or it'll be able to form a transition here that you can surf. And the reason why we ended up building the box with the plywood triangles like that is that the um, plywood is really flexible, like if you pushed on the sheet, like that, it bends, but when you stand it on end like this and you have compression on the top, it's really, really strong. So once you get the connections between it with the with two by fours and then the sheet of plywood across, it anchors everything together and it won't allow the, uh, the top sheet of plywood to bend down. But one problem with having these plywood sections in there and having these pieces of the blocking in is that this box is, uh, not watertight, but doesn't really allow water to get in there, which I'm trying to have happen. You want to get water in there, I think, because the box will be really heavy and harder for the current to push it around once it gets underwater. So I think what I'm going to do is put a hole on in this piece back piece of plywood here, and once it's underwater, air air will escape and water will get in through those holes and keep that bad boy heavy and keep it in place. So we got one last addition. We got holes in the back for water to get in and we have these plywood dividers. There's three of them for each compartment. And what those do is add lateral stability. So if you shook the box side to side, um, it may be a little floppy, but now that we have these pieces of plywood in, then it's a lot more sturdy when it's being forced uh, side to side. And then the main function of them is that when water gets into the compartment, I want it to stay back heavy so the nose of the entire box won't dive before I'm ready. So when water gets in each of the holes, it fills up the back three, or back section of those three compartments. And that'll tilt, it'll make the back heavy and it'll keep the nose up or when it's in the water and then hopefully we'll be able to figure out a way to have it so we can get the nose to dive and then the whole thing goes underwater and 
then once the hole's structured underwater, the water will continue to go in through those holes. It'll flood up past the level of these plywood dividers and then flood the front section and then the entire thing will be flooded. So we'll see how it goes, but I think that's the last bit before we get the ropes tied to the corners and get the plywood sheet on the front.